So today we're going to talk about uh, fusion charts and how to develop uh, fusion chart bezels. Uh, we do have fusion chart builders, um, but they can get a little bit uh, complicated and they actually use the, uh, the older way of um, uh, kind of writing the charts. Um, we've recently installed the Angular uh, component, the Angular fusion chart component, so it makes everything a little bit easier, especially if you're dealing with fusion charts in the uh, custom builder. Um, to start here, we're just going to go to the custom builder. And the, uh, the first step here is, um, we don't have it as a snippet right now, um, but I will just copy and paste this, uh, this HTML code from a, a different bezel. I'm going to copy that line of code that you actually just saw before. And it's just going to be a, an execution charts component. Um, there's going to be five um, five basic things you need in here. Um, I think you can add more. Um, there's some documentation out there as well, but uh, you'll need a width, a height, a type, a data format, and a data source. Um, we all point we point these to um, local bezel variables. Um, as you can kind of see, we have a, we're going to make a config variable and a data source uh, variable. The first variable, um, name config. This is the uh, easier of the two to uh, to get together, but uh, I'm just going to copy and paste a, a similar format from my other bezel. No, that's not what I want. <clears throat> so, very simple um, object here. It's just going to have a width, a height, a type, and a uh, data format. Um, the type is actually the type of fusion chart um, you want to you wanna have run. And I guess this is a good segue into uh, the fusion charts uh, documentation. So if you go to fusioncharts.com, um, we actually license this uh, into Bezlio. Uh, we license all, the, all their fusion charts. But if you go to the docs page, um, this is just going to have a lot of information for developing fusion charts. There should be a list of charts on the left here. And it's actually going to give you uh, a, a whole, you know, a whole list of charts. Um, if you click on the chart type name, it's going to bring you to a different page with a little bit more in depth about that chart. But it's also going to give you this JavaScript alias, and that's actually what we put into this type. So for the bar 2D chart, uh, we're just going to use bar 2D. Easy enough. And if we go into the more detailed uh, bar 2D uh, chart here. It's going to actually show us uh, an example chart of how it will look. Um, it will give us some JSON example, and then it'll also give us um, some attributes. Now these attributes, you can use um, any of these attributes uh, in, in the Fusion chart. Um, it doesn't need all of them to be listed, and that's kind of the next step here. So. After we verify and save and close this config variable, we're going to make a new variable, and we're going to name that one data source. Now, with the name data source, it kind of um, implies that it's the uh, just the data that you want to display, but it is going to be a little bit more than that. It's going to actually have some of those attributes um, for the customization of, um, of these bar charts. Um, so what I'm actually going to do right now is uh, I'm just going to copy from clipboard from the Fusion Charts uh, website. I'm going to paste it into this data source variable. Um, just to kind of go through some of these, um, these aren't all necessary. And as you can see, there are a, a ton of different attributes you can use to customize this chart um, in, in a number uh, of different ways. But uh, to start, uh, the caption is just the title. The subcaption is just kind of like the, the subtitle. Um, the, these up here, I guess, are just how the chart is going to look and how it's going to function. And then you're going to have this data um, array. And this is all in JSON. Uh, this is a JSON object. So it kind of makes it easy with um, you know, arrays and objects that way. Um, so I'm just going to verify, save, and close this. And this is from the, um, the Fusion Charts website. So this is just really just uh, static data 
um, just more of an example than anything. There we go. I think uh, I just had a timeout on my web page here. But yep, so this is um, just the example data, uh, same data as you can see on the, uh, the documents page here. The, uh, the next step here would be to wire it up to a data subscription and have uh, you know, that data subscription kind of fill our, our, our data. We have a few different data subscription options um, just on our side of things. Um, let's see. So I believe we have a query out there in the uh, Epicor folder. And these names aren't very, um, very nice, I guess. Uh, the single and multi actually return the same data, just a, a different way of showing it. So I'm just going to use the multi here. We're going to verify it, and we can see our data here. Just months and values. So I think the next step here would be to change the bar, the bar chart to a column chart, and it's going to be the same process. So we're going to go into our config, and instead of a bar 2D, I think we're just going to use um, column 2D here. I'm going to verify that. Just to give a, uh, just to kind of get it how they want to see it, we're just going to copy this JSON as well, paste it in our data source. Now, as you can kind of see down here, it does have a trend line. Um, I'm just going to remove that trend line for the time being. Um, let's see if this. So this monthly target is the trend line, and that's usually a static number, but you can also modify that. Um, through JavaScript as well. I'm going to save this. I'm going to preview. And it should look a little bit different than the last one. So the next step here is to actually modify this data in this data source to use uh, our data. This, can, this will need to be done on, the, uh, on data change kind of like we went over the last couple of weeks here. We're just going to do an if, uh, and then we're just going to drag that data sub in. So if it exists, then we're going to sort through it. And actually, before I do that, for this data source, I'm going to remove this static data just so we can write our data into it. So I'm just going to make that, that data uh, property an array. And if we preview it, it's just going to say no data to display. But on that uh, data change here, we're just going to do a for each. So for each, for each, uh, I guess, um, object in that data sub, we're going to uh, add it to our, our data source. I think that's going to be, let me check my notes here. I just need to know what the properties are called here. Okay. So for each of these, uh, these objects we're going to push onto that data source. And I believe that's just data source.data, since it is a JSON array. And we're going to push a, uh, an object here. This object is going to have a value and a label. And that value and label 
is just going to be um, each object of that data sub. So we're going to do D dot value and D dot label. Just to see what that object looks like after we push all that data, we're just going to do a console.log just to confirm that it's uh, in the right syntax. Bottom here. So as you can kind of see, the, the data actually filled up. Um, but if we look at that object that we displayed there, it's going to have uh, two, two major properties. It's going to have the, uh, let me blow that up. It's going to have the chart and then the data. The chart is just those list of options. And that data, after we push on um, our data, it's going to just have values and labels. So that's um, just an easy intro into how, uh, how to use Fusion Charts in the Custom Builder. Um, a lot of it is just looking at this documentation and kind of customizing the chart the way you want it. And then also just pushing your data uh, onto the, the data source uh, dot data array.